Yeah, Lou, this is Delusional here. For this video, I want to talk about Yoshimitsu's evasive means of moving around against certain attacks. Now, somebody has commented onto my channel talking about that they wanted to know how to properly evade with Yoshimitsu. I've gotten a couple of comments, not really a lot, but let's just say that for those that want to know how to properly evade with Yoshimitsu, there is a way, but I gotta say something before we move on to that. There is no proper way to evade in this game. There is no sure way to evade a move in this game. The only reason why you may see players at higher levels managing to evade moves is because they're making guesses. They're making reads, hard reads in particular, to when a move can be stepped. Unless they see a particular string that they can recognize as a move that they can step to either side, a lot of the times it's just guessing whether or not if you can step the move or not. So it's not really easy stepping in this game or evading moves in this game. Some characters have built in invasion tactics or evasion moves that help them alleviate some of that problem that this game has. Especially in Tekken 8 that feels like a lot of the moves track even better than they used to do than in Tekken 7, even with the so-called buffed sidesteps in this game. So the most that I can do is showcase you what can you try to do and when it's time to make that proper guess, right? So once I'm done showcasing the moves that you can use with Yoshimitsu and of course the universal means of how to step in this game, I'll move on to an actual gameplay playthrough online to showcase how I attempt to evade with Yoshimitsu so that you can then get an understanding as to how I implement his moves to evade in game. So we already have the universal way of basically evading moves. You have your side step to your left, side step to your right, side walking to your left, side walking to your right. You got your back steps, you got your crouching to evade highs, and you even got your jump if you want to use your jump to evade lows. Though most people won't really use it, they'll just stay grounded anyways. Now, it's not perfect, but if you do manage to make the proper read on the opponent that they may use an attack that you can step, you can try stepping it by simply pressing up or down. But I tend to sidewalk mostly, because sidewalking is better, in my opinion, than sidestepping. Some of the times, so depending on the overall speed, sidewalking may actually be worse than sidestepping regularly, depending on how quickly the move recovers. Same thing with ducking. I see a lot of players are, are too afraid to actually duck because they're afraid of mids. But it's also time to make that proper guess or that read whether or not if the opponent may use a high and then duck down. Backstepping is also mostly for spacing and you can also kind of block backstep in the case that you can backstep and then block to help you out. But it's not perfect either because at the very, I guess, beginning frames of backstepping, you can still get hit. So then that leaves us with the overall moves that Yoshimitsu has. So we have moves like, for example, his back 3 and back 4. Back 3 by pressing multiple times or pressing multiple times with back 4 to evade moves. I would say it's best to try to use back 3 and back 4 multiple times in the case that don't do 1 back 3, do 2 instead. Same thing with back 4, don't use 1, use 2 instead. Reason why is that you have more time to, or should I say, you have more spacing to getting away from the opponent if you were to use two back threes or two back fours than just using one. Then you have meditation stance. Meditation stance by pressing back and then down back to cancel out of meditation stance actually allows you to create spacing as well. Better than backstepping in my opinion. But the only issue with using this is that you can still get caught by moves. So it doesn't have the same qualities as backstepping where you can backstep and still block. So as an example of how I use it in game sometimes, is that if I want to create a lot of space, I'll do this. Now to do that, I already have a video on my channel that showcases how to do meditation stance cancels. So if you want an in-depth guide on that, there's already one on my channel. I wouldn't really say in-depth, but it does showcase how to properly do a meditation cancel. But if you want a quick summary, you simply press 3 plus 4. And as soon as you hear the whoosh, the sound, the whooshing sound from the air, you press back and then down back. In about a two frame interval, it has to be quick. It can't be done exactly in three frames or four frames, it has to be done quickly. 
Then you've got your Indian stance. Indian stance is not really a type of evasive stance. But if you press forward or back, if you're close enough to the opponent, like how I am right now, you can get behind them. Now you do this by simply going into your Indian stance and pressing back or forward, and you can get behind them. But if you're too far away, like around here, then you're likely to just end up whiffing the chance to teleport behind the opponent. Now how do you implement this move in an actual game? Well, don't use this reactionary. Don't use this as a reactionary way, like waiting for the opponent to attack and then using your back or forward to teleport behind the opponent. It won't work that way as often, at least from my experience. You have to use this preemptively. If you think they're about to attack you, then go into your Indian stance if you want to duck hives, and then press forward or back to teleport behind your opponent. Don't use this in a reactionary point. Use it at a preemptive point. Be proactive. Then you have flee. I won't mention a lot of flee stuff besides the fact that you have three and four that act like your back three and back four while you're standing. But it's not as good. In fact, I would really say that don't use this as a way to evade. Use this to reposition yourself or to realign yourself towards your opponent. It's best to use it in that way because it's not as good as regular side steps and it's not as great as back threes and back fours. But you still have some evasive moves. You have jumping by either jumping up regularly or jumping forward or jumping backwards to kind of evade moves. At least the particularly certain mid moves or high moves you can actually kind of go on top and hit the opponent with it if you were to, you know, make the proper read. Then you have flee into down or pressing down. By doing that, you can actually evade highs, like normally, like other moves that you use in your stances, but it actually has the property to even evade mids, but not all mids. That's the only issue. It's not like shall use AOP, where you can just simply just go into AOP or sidestep AOP or AOP and then duck even more so to even manage to evade certain mids or even grounded mids with Xiaoyu. So it's not as good as that, but it is capable of evading certain mids. Let's say for example if Kazuya were to use forward 2. As you see right there, I managed to evade his mid. But if he were to use, a, for example, a down forward 1. You see, I get hit. So it doesn't really work as well comparatively to certain mids. It has to be like a mid that seems linear, that doesn't kind of like come out as an uppercut per se, to catch the flea down duck move. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into natural game and I'm going to showcase that how I implement my type of evasiveness with Yoshimitsu. I'll try my best to try to do it, to not to get too locked in into the game, to try to show a perfect example. So I'm just mostly going to try my best to evade moves and then try to win the game if possible. And if not, then, you know, you'll get most out of my demonstration online.
okay, so that's everything. I think that I've showcased at my best to properly uh, utilize the evasion moves with Yoshimitsu, the universal moves you can use like stepping and backstepping and ducking, and then of course adding the specific Yoshimitsu moves you can use to evade with him. So I hope that this actually helped you guys in identifying exactly when to properly use evasion type of moves with Yoshimitsu, because I think that's mostly what people want in the video having to do with Yoshimitsu, how to evade, not really how to universally evade with Yoshimitsu. So if you guys like what you watch, give it a like, a dislike if you want to, subscribe if you want to see more of my shit, and stay tuned.